Wagon people just a come from the yard when you know after Mother's Day visit with the old lady. Um and first spent some time with my siblings and, and so on. And so clearly I was in Jamaica during the period when the announcements of these massive salary increases were made for largely the political class in Jamaica because you kind of can't separate it. You know, while the lion's share of the money is going to the members of the cabinet and, you know, opposition and so on, to a large extent, it spreads over the political class, members of parliament, councillors and, and so on and so forth. Now, let me make it clear. I don't have a problem that people are being paid and paid properly. As long as, A, we can afford it, B, there is a, you know, equity, and, and C, that there, the, the justification is more than just about people being able to live a little better, but that they're going to be accountable for, you know, to the public um, for the money they're being paid and for the jobs that they do. So that's, that's one. The, the second part of my concern has to do with how that squares up against what has become common practice in Jamaica. Now, we, we, we have what I call a plantation economy in Jamaica. We, we, we emanated from that. And to a large extent, while we don't have much of the, the plantocracy in operation, the structure through which we address issues of wages and salaries and compensation still maintains from the plantation style, which means that you don't, you know, you don't place a lot of value on the work that people do. And so what happens is that those at the top of the pyramid in the plantation, they are the ones who make the money. The people who do the work doesn't. You know, you look at the balance sheets of companies that are listed and you see where they're doing exceptionally well, raking in billions and billions of dollars in profits per year. But, and then paying their executives, you know, at the higher level, but the people who do the housework really get spit money. And to a large extent, that is what applies in Jamaica. You know, when you look at the numbers and, you know, just looking at some surveys here um, this morning, more than 50% of Jamaicans earn under $87,000 a month. $87,000 a month, um, you analyze that you're probably looking at just about $240 US a week. Let me get it to the arithmetic. But the point is, um, the majority of our workforce is underpaid. And so when you're talking about paying somebody $87,000, thousand dollars a month and that's gross pay you 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 you're talking about more than half of your population working population is earning under a million dollars a year you know and one wonders how people live on that kind of money and so when you look at a politician who not really do nothing for the friggin money um let's start at the top of the prime minister um who is planning now to pay himself some, somewhere in the ballpark of 180,000 United States dollars a year, right? That's $24 million a year, right? I'm not saying Prime Minister doesn't deserve to be properly paid in. I'm saying when you measure the, perf the, the pay with what we have been getting in terms of performance, is a, is an absolute disgrace. And so if you come down the line to a, a member of parliament, half of the member of parliament, them, the people them after them vote for them, them don't see them again. And so you move their pay from 4 million, which is low, I agree, to now paying them 10, 11 million dollars a year. But you still not get nothing from them because they're only members of parliament. They're not cabinet ministers. Now at the cabinet minister level, you're paying people, you know, you move their pay from most about what, 6 million to to upwards now of $17 million a year. And the question you have to ask is, you know, for what? We just finished a, a salary reclassification exercise with the, the public, serve, public sector workers, police, nurses, 
you know, teachers and, you know, other workers in the public sector. The average public sector worker in Jamaica earn on an average of about 2.2 .2 to 2.3 million Jamaican dollars a year, right? And these are the people who essentially keep the government afloat in terms of the work that they do, right? We have a problem in Jamaica where, in the first instance, our population has not grown, has not been growing um, for the better part of the last 15 years. We are in a net decline position. And, you know, people, my children and um, lots of my contemporaries who I went to school, university with, we have children who are not having any children. And you know, don't make nobody fool you about whole heap of people out there where have whole heap of people. A bullshit argument that Jamaica, its population has been declining at a rate of something like um, 0.4% per annum, right? Um, we have had a, a, a you know a serious slowdown the population rate, which is which is affecting our workforce. And then when you add to that is the business of migration. You know, talk to some relatives of mine this morning and essentially those who are still there, these are the younger ones, you know, nieces and nephews and so on. And they're looking away. They're looking to, you know, fly the coop, go to Canada, wherever, where they can make a living. Because as one of them said to me this morning, you know, I, I simply could also go run about $18 million and she now work that kind of money where she can buy that kind of property, you know. So she willing to take our chances. And, you know, legions of uh, Jamaicans are now lining up in, against that position. Jamaica's, Jamaicans are migrating at record rates. Why? And, and so when you hear, like, you know, the Minister of Insecurity, Chang, who I got them and pay him now some nearly 20 or 22 million, 23 million a year for doing nothing. The man is an absolute frigging disaster, right? But we are paying. And he might talk about how oh, we're looking at these uh, um, concocted programs where people have, you know, uh, get migrate people out of Jamaica for go look job America. And, and and that some of these are illegal schemes, and that may he may very well be right with that, but it that demonstrates the the level of desperation among your workforce that they are willing to sacrifice themselves, if, uh, you know, and take up these schemes because nothing now. Nah, it's a picture of behind me, a painting behind me, the back of the man with the man I'm jaw. It's a painting I did about twelve years ago, and the the title of the painting is nothing now. Nah, go on. Let me tell you something. For the majority of work, workers in Jamaica, nothing na guan. Let me take the conversation further. Only a couple of months ago, the, the president of the Jamaican Employers Federation, a brown skinned man where I make a whole heap of money with, and everybody tie up with the government, made the argument that you can't increase workers' pay because it's inflationary, it's going to affect companies and, and so on, and productivity levels and all of that. Because you pay people too much. You can't rasp pay people too much money when them now make nothing anyway. Two million dollar a, a, a grass feed money that, right? Can't do nothing. Right? But the company them where them I work for is raking in a piss pot load of money. The same government is talking about how much more taxes they managed to pull in last year, way, way, way above what they had budgeted for. And instead of spread this around to the, the public sector workers to create equity and encourage people to stay in the country, thing, what they've done is they've creamed off a portion of the money and decided, let us pay ourselves. Let us increase our pay dramatically, right? Again, let me make it clear now. Me personally believe that a rising tide floats all boats. So me personally believe that you need to pay people at a, a livable wage rate. How do you justify that if you can live upon $10 million a year, so you can now pay yourself not not 100% um, percent, but 203% increase for your current pay, right? 
But the most you can do for a man who will earn maybe a $2 million is give him a 7 or a 10% increase. They have the same responsibilities like what you have in it, right? And we can't see that in an economy that not going anywhere, what you need to do is to encourage people to A, stay there to try to help build the thing. B, increase consumption because we are a production-based economy. And if you have produce and there's nobody to consume it, all you are doing is, is remaining in a stagnated state, right? So the argument about holding down wages is a bullshit argument. It goes nowhere because that kind of thinking as an, as an economic idea went through the window with the dark friggin' ages, right? You need to encourage people to get up and go to work. And the way you do that is by paying people a livable wage rate. People have the same desires like the politicians. They want to buy a nice car, live in a reasonable environment, a security, good house with, you know, running water, electricity, and them can send them children to school. That's the basic needs that every single Jamaican have. And there's only one way to get that legally, is to work for it. And the way to encourage people to work is to pay them properly. So when you then stand up in the parliament and you say, oh, we can't pay people more than chop and zip in it, but we're going to pay ourselves bullions. Think about that. I know a whole heap of people out there because you, you know, you have to get a politician and a blowjob as they walk up and down. You, 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 you know, you can't find favor with my argument because I don't support you. I really don't care who the government is in a boss. What I care about is a, the creation of an environment that works for more uh, the, or for the majority of the people. It can be that it will only work for 63 of the people in, or the people in, if you widen it out from the, uh, the council. Because our council are get moving up. Council are moving from two pound safety to a point where they might earn about $5 million a year. So everybody are around going to politics now. And there is no performance that performance criteria that underpins those salaries. Nobody get fired when them do shit or them don't do anything. But we have to pay people a whole lot more money and the people who keep the country running, float, you ain't paying them nothing. Teachers, you know, even doctors are running because them figure better off out of, out of, out of grass. Think about that. Eh? Again, I am not saying we mustn't pay people more money, you know, but we, we need to look at this whole business of equity, right? That when we make these decisions, how it impacts the broad majority of Jamaicans. Because Jamaica people are, people are go to Panama, go to Belize. In fact, the United States now encourage the people in Panama and Belize to tell them for Jamaica people are forget visa for come there. Because they know so they might come down the and then join the Zion train caravan from across the Central American Peninsula into Mexico where them can think. Man, I put up them house and pay 5,000 US dollars to some criminal out there to get them through Mexico into the United. That is how desperate people is. Right? And a number of them who them catch and send them back, them come from the same radio and uh, down in Jamaica and say, them willing to do it again. Because guess what? As the painting they say, see there? See there? Nothing na guan, and for a majority of Jamaicans, let me tell you, no, nothing na guan. And then when you add pan top of that, the crime rate, you know, the the hustling, the the corruption at all levels of the society, people are trying to escape that. It is a corrupt decision, no matter how how much degree the minister of finance have and him and him pretty talk. Me, I go tell you, say a bull crap in my talk. Right? When you try to justify this and against a background of a country where people are dead for hungry. People are dead for hungry. And all you can come and talk about, oh, the equity and the this and the that and the pretty Harvard and whatever talking. The bottom line is, you're not saying nothing. Right? And then we have a mini, a, a, a opposition leader. And an opposition party that is an absolute disgrace 
absolute. I expected yesterday, man, when I come out at, at Jamaica, that all road with a black and tire burn and the place catch a fire where people are protest, right? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We have become as docile as sheep. We just line up and the thing and then shave off all of your hair and send you back out the road again. That's where we have come. The Jamaica that I grew up in in the 1960s and the 70s, we have become a shadow of ourselves, right? There is the, 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 the kind of stridency that, you know, represented Jamaicans throughout the Americas in those years. It's gone. We just sit down on my hand. But I guess everybody is so fed up and frustrated that they just look for finding a way out. That is what Jamaica has come to. And them politicians here, basically, these are them last gasping. You know, what them are saying is, but if, if, we call, if and when we call an election and we lose, we are make certain so we are right still. And in order for a, a little appeasement, we are brush off some of this money from the opposition, man, them too. So, Will they oppose this? No. Because although a crap, they are beneficiaries. That's where we have gone to. Let me give what you think. But what me just say, you know. Me no really want to get into the details of the figures. Me have it. And if, as the conversation develops on the video, I will be more than happy to share it some more. But let me hear what you think. If you like the video, me I'll ask if you just hit the like button, share but I think this is a serious conversation that requires us to get up and start to talk about it. Let's do something. Let me hear what you think. Respect.